அசத்தலான பேச்சாளராக ஜானக்கியா இன்டர்நேஷனல் அகாடமியின் ஆங்கரிங் அண்ட் பப்ளிக் ஸ்பீக்கிங் பயிற்சி பட்டறை நவம்பர் பதிமூன்று முதல் நேரடி மற்றும் இணைய வழி வகுப்பு தொடர்புக்கு செவன் டபுள் த்ரீ Chaturvedi, dear friends, uh, I am delighted to be with you all today at the 8th Roundtable of the ASEAN India Network of Think Tanks. And I thank RIS and the ICS Yusuf Ishak Institute for hosting us today. The theme of our gathering is Navigating a World in Transition, Agenda for the ASEAN-India Partnership. and let us briefly reflect on that subject the world is always in transition and nations are perpetually navigating that but seriously both terms are relative in their intent as usage today of the word transition actually is meant to signify the rate of change rather than change itself and navigation is perhaps more a description of compulsions rather than only of skills so allow me to dilate on those aspects the last quarter century has seen many inflection points understandably we focus particularly on major events in big nations but the more consequential actually are the ones which are more universal in their impact and to my mind three of them stand out one is china's entry into the wto in 2001 that had profound consequences for globalization the second is the financial crisis of 2008 which heralded a new era of rebalancing and the third is the covid pandemic of 2020 that exposed many of our socio economic vulnerabilities and capacity constraints so starkly the three are obviously correlated now some other things have also happened in this period europe for example witnessed brexit the united states has reset terms vis-a-vis -vis the world over multiple administrations terms of engagement vis-a-vis -vis the world over multiple administrations a conflict in ukraine has shaken eurasia out of its strategic complacency west asia or middle east as some call it is seeing long standing issues and fissures exploding beyond expectations in our own continent territorial disputes and challenges to international law have become a significant and recurring source of instability the world has responded in different ways to different challenges in different geographies in our own the emergence of the indo pacific and the maturing of the quad are noteworthy for promoting global good now even growth and progress have shown a double edged character on the one hand they have created prosperity on an unprecedented scale bringing into being new forces of production demonstrating the promise of technology and spurring the proliferation of connectivity at the same time we have also seen a leveraging of market shares and economic dependency the weaponization of international economics and the strategization of connectivity data privacy and cyber security have become overriding concerns the covid experience in many ways was a moment of truth since then the quest for more resilient supply chains trusted partners and diversified production have become the crucial global agenda whether it is challenges or indeed opportunities the world today is clearly headed 
for re-globalization, not de-globalization. That is the transition that we, ASEAN and India, separately and together have to navigate. The quality of our partnership will be influenced by the extent of convergence on all these domains. In the last three decades, as you heard from Minister Vivian, we have built up a solid track record of cooperation that has served us both very well. To take it to the next level, we must, however, utilize the changing global situation to our advantage rather than bemoan it as a departure from the norm with which we were all so comfortable. So let me offer some thoughts in that regard. Global manufacturing and supply chains have started to transition. It could be even more so in emerging and critical technologies and the digital chain. Considerations beyond the efficiency of logistics and the costs of products are coming into play. In India, we are seeing both the proliferation of global capability centers and the expansion of manufacturing. To accelerate these trends, the Modi government has announced the establishment of 12 new industrial parks. It has also doubled down on infrastructure building that has made so much progress already in the last decade. Along with that, there is a deepening focus on enhancing the quality of India's talents and skills through vocational training, internships, and expanding the education sector. Each of these could be opportunities for the partnership between ASEAN and India. In visualizing areas of cooperation, we are also targeting new domains and technologies that hold such visible potential. Both India and ASEAN are today more focused on realizing the value of green hydrogen and green ammonia. We are preparing for an era of electric mobility, green shipping, and green steel. Our businesses will have to adjust accordingly. The digital world also opens up new possibilities as we all seek to collaborate to establish more payment platforms, data centers, and semiconductor facilities. The international economy is also contemplating changes that go beyond just technology. The unevenness of the spread of talent and the availability of skills is today actually a very significant concern. It will be felt even more as we enter deeper into the knowledge economy and the requirements of AI. The solutions lie in devising greater mobility both for human resources and for enterprises themselves. These understandably have socio-political consequences, but will be key to remaining competitive. The increase of global capability centers, which are almost nearing 2,000 now in India, will be a continuing trend. Such mobility can be optimized only if we invest in the training and preparation of skills. This will be increasingly important for our partnership. Connectivity is another domain that merits attention. The post-1945 economic growth centers have naturally created new logistical demands. They are also correcting the distortions and the disruptions of the colonial era. Recent conflicts and extreme climate events have only underlined the case for new connectivity initiatives. Where India is concerned, the trilateral highway to the east, the India Middle East Europe Economic Corridor, IMEC, and the International North South Transport Corridor, INSTC, are major commitments. Understanding their implications is key to exploiting the opportunities they could present. Digital and energy connectivity have also been the subject of recent conversations, especially between India and Singapore. At the end of the day, collaborative connectivity will always be used better and regarded more positively 
than unilateral ventures. India and ASEAN are major demographies whose emerging demands can not only support each other but become larger productive forces in the international economy. After all, together we account for more than a quarter of the world's population. Again, as Minister Vivian pointed out, our GDP is similar and you are among our $100 billion plus trade accounts. Our consumer demands and lifestyle choices are themselves major economic drivers. They will also shape the scale of services and connectivity as we promote trade, tourism, mobility and education. The magnitude of our endeavors has a resonance that is far beyond the immediate domain. Our collaboration can also be crucial in addressing contemporary challenges in an era of extreme climate events. Ensuring food security is a major concern. Similarly, with the experience of global pandemics, preparing for health security is no less vital. There are lessons even from the recent past on both accounts. There are and there will be political challenges in our shared regions that we will also have to address together. A prime example today is the situation in Myanmar. The interests and I dare say perspective of those who are pro proximate will always be different. We do not have the luxury of distance or indeed of time. This is increasingly the case for HADR situations as well, as also of maritime safety and security. A stronger culture of self-help will only arise by putting our heads and our hands together. The bonding between India and ASEAN is rooted in a deep cultural and civilizational connect. Nurturing that has a value in itself. In recent times, India has contributed to heritage restoration and conservation of art forms. Taking that forward is certainly helpful to promoting deeper people-to-people -people understanding. So, ladies and gentlemen, the India-ASEAN partnership, now in its fourth decade, holds immense possibilities. We have been an enthusiastic participant in all ASEAN-led forums. Additionally, our bilateral and trilateral engagements have contributed to our closeness. The Mekong Ganga Cooperation, MGC, and the Indonesia Malaysia Thailand Growth Triangle, IMTGT, are making their impact felt as well. As the Indo Pacific evolves, India has been expressive in its support for ASEAN's centrality and cohesion. We see it as an indispensable pathway as well as a meeting ground. We have been equally clear about respect for international law, rules and norms. Both in approach and substance, our convergences have only grown over these last four decades. As we look ahead, this is a foundation from which we can aspire to higher ambitions. Thank you for your attention.